Okay, so when you're ready, you come back into the Zoom screen, open your eyes. So perhaps somebody would like to volunteer to share what happened in the meditation. Okay, Brett. Hello, John. Um, <clears throat> it's been very difficult for me um, this last week uh, as I have to have, have, have had to deal with three lots of grief. So my mum died in February, my dad died in August, and my relationship ended at the end of August as well. Um, and I found it very difficult to um, try and bring myself, or I have done this last week in particular, to, to bring myself into a state of equilibrium where the peace and the quiet is usually there. The thoughts are rising up um, to do with the grief. And I use the self-inquiry to try and sort of like calm the thoughts but then there's another part of me so I'm a little bit in conflict because there's another part of me that says that I should let the grief flow um so it's kind of been a quite a difficult time at the moment for me but I am getting moments where there is peace and there is quiet but because of that underlying grief that you know you have to go through it's a process um I'm finding things a bit difficult at the moment, but it's kind of, there is the peace there. And I know in time, I have to give myself time to be able to um, go through that grieving process and then finally find myself, which is part of the reason why I'm coming with you to India. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a mending exercise for me at the moment, but the meditation is is helping and it's there but it's, you know, it, as a human being, we all have emotions and we all have feelings. And and sometimes when you're dealing with things like grief. So, for example, Brett, in this last 10 minutes, yeah, what did you experience in the last 10 minutes? The grief. Right. Grief. Right. And what is that? How does that work for you? Do you uh, feel very, very lost? Do you feel sad? What do you feel? I, I feel... Um, there's a big sense within me of letting people down. Um, but it's kind of uh, particularly with the death of my dad. Um, but the, the feelings are overwhelming and, and they rise up. And it's just very, it's just deep sadness. Just right. deep sadness. Um, right. That's all I can really say, really. Right. So with your mother and your father, you're feeling that you could have had more contact in your life than you did? Um, what, what did you not do that you wished you had have done? Um, I mean, I, I was always there to support them and I was very dutiful. Um, I think it wasn't so much with my mother um, because she was quite ill, but um, my dad, um, he fell down the stairs and I would go and see my dad twice a week on a one, Wednesday and a Friday. Um, and right. he went down the stairs on a Sunday and he laid in the kitchen doorway for three days before the paper boy found him. Um, and right. I've this overwhelming sense of guilt that keeps coming up um, of not being there to save him. But it was a situation that was completely out of my control because it wasn't. So in that three days he had died, had he? Lying on the floor? Uh, no, he, he died of sepsis in hospital, but he would, if I'd got to, him, got to him a bit earlier, you know, I may have been able to help him, but it's a situation that's beyond my control and I'm, I'm trying to deal, come to terms with that, if you understand. Well, I mean, it seems to me that, you know, visiting him twice a week, I mean, mm. he was perhaps 70, 70 years old or... He was 94. 80. He was 94. Oh, he was 94. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, okay. So... Um, okay, so I mean, what I could say to you is that, you know, I'm now 80. Mm. And the guys who I'm living with, they recently, uh, we recently got a band, which I wear on my right hand, my right arm. 
And this is like an emergency ban. So if I yeah. fall down like your father did, mm. it would set off an alarm bell to yeah. three or four people who I'm close to. Yeah. I, he, he had one around his neck and he would be right. on his neck all the time. And unfortunately, I think what happened with him was he got up in the night and fell down the stairs because his stair lift was at the top of the stairs and he didn't have his neck alarm on. Uh, right. And it was actually the paper boy who found him. So it was, um, but I still, you know, like I said, it, it's that overwhelming sense of guilt that keeps rising up at the moment. And obviously it's the three lots of grief with my relationship ending and also with my mum going. It's, it's kind of like been a little bit difficult this, this last week. But I am trying to find that equilibrium again. But I know it's that process that I have to go through at the moment. And I think it's... What, in come. what way do you feel you let your father down? Because, um, it, I mean, I don't know, I mean, the whole history of your relationship, but it doesn't sound to me like you particularly let him down. You were doing what you reasonably could, maybe. Yeah. So I, I don't know why do you feel yeah. so... I, I don't know. I, I I can't put a I can't put a button on it, John. To be perfectly honest, it's is is. I think it's just the overwhelming sense of duty. I guess um, you know, like I I just don't know. I can't put a, a finger on it. Um, and you know, well, okay. So I could put, I can put a finger on it. So yeah. I mean, basically, these are kind of strong moments. Yeah, when a mother dies, a father dies. My my own parents died about five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a you know, strong process for me, but it sounds as if your father was already uh, 95. He's lived a long life and presumably he's done what he wanted to do. And you've been a dutiful son and you've been, been visiting twice a week. There's not a lot more you could do. You've got this alarm thing and it's unfortunate that it was happening in the night and he didn't have it, he wasn't wearing it, you know. I don't think you need to feel guilty about that. So what what is actually left is what this um, this material which I'm sharing from Ramana Mahashi is all about. Mm -hmm. Because you have right now, you're very strongly identified with being a somebody. You're mm -hmm. the son who feels something about the father, you're the son feels something about the, the mother, you're the, the, the partner who feels something about the relationship which uh, broke down. Um, so you're very much in your personal, I would say. Yeah. So the I... way to change all this is to be aware that you're very much in the personal and realize what Ramana is saying all the time, and he's saying it again tonight, mm -hmm. is that um, there is no personal. This is a illusion we've created a kind of character in your case called brett in my case called john we, we've created a character and in our daily life we're very much identified with this character as if this character is real and what ramana is doing constantly is to point out that this is not true you see yeah. there is nobody so if yeah. you can come back to the self which is your your nature this is your essential nature this is your um you know natural navigation that you like mm. um then all these things you're talking about they they fall away yeah. so you probably had some years with your girlfriend and sometimes you had a great time sometimes you didn't have such a great time but it, it, it is as it is with any relationship. You know, you have good times, not so good times. And then if the good, not good times are too much uh, apparent, then the thing breaks and you separate. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the thing to be aware, particularly with relationship, is that it's very easy in relationship to be constantly living a duality. So we're yeah. talking about, you know, we don't a non-duality, but we're actually living duality. Mm. So in our community, I'm very happy that in the last few years, we we maintain a um, couple-free um, community. Mm. So we have uh, 16 people who are 
very much uh, connected to each other, I would say to the point where there's a lot of love between the people for each other. And we share a lot of uh, intimacy in our lives. We share cars, we share dinner, we share you know, in many different ways. But for the first years of our community, we had a lot of children, we had a lot of relationships, and in fact, the whole one of the whole efforts was always that somebody would be looking for a partner in the community. We even had a baby, two babies born in from a community from these meetings. Yeah, mm. but I I always felt a bit uneasy, and I've always been encouraging people to stand on their own feet and to be available to meet another, but not to get caught up in a um, very much a duality situation yeah. and so if you put more energy into that aspect you may find that what's going on could could re release itself a bit yes yeah no i agree i, I think it's um it's just that release of that i, I just want to be free of it if you know what i mean because it's like the chains are, are pulling me down and I think it's but, but you have to be free of the idea that you're somebody. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise there'll be a new girlfriend, there'll be a new close friend who needs help, there'll be your own life, there'll be mm -hmm. there's always something going on which gives you the chance to identify and be a somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I understand. To break, to break that illusion, we have to be very uh, aware, self-aware of falling into that because that doesn't lead us anywhere except what you're experiencing no, no. and i think when i first met you maybe it was a month ago you were sharing the similar things then a month ago mm. and since then i would say you appeared more uh, rather brighter mm. this week uh, you've fallen into some yeah. similar feelings you had a month ago yeah, it, it's been a it's been a roller coaster, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster. But I I I, I understand what you're saying, and I, and I think it's just one of the things that's really interesting was um, I was I was reading uh, something about Ramana last night, and um, who am I? Because I, I I question that. Who am I? I I do that a lot, and I do that self inquiry a lot. And the question, who am I? He's actually not looking for an answer. It's looking to dissolve the questioner. So right. I, kind of, I kind of get that aspect of it, but it's very difficult, particularly with the emotions that are going on with me at the moment. But, you know, I appreciate what you're saying and, and what, you, what you say, it makes absolute total sense. It, it really does. I mean, there's no, no doubt. Right. So, so you can actually... Also, thank your parents, thank your girlfriend for giving you this strong moment and giving you the chance to see that out of these strong emotions, you are getting caught up again in an illusion. Yeah. Something that you don't really want to be doing. No, exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And sometimes, sometimes it takes somebody just to sort of like say something like that, and then it just goes boom. And that's right. just just you saying that now to me has just made me feel a lot lighter. Good. Okay. Lot... Let's talk again a bit later. Thank you. So would somebody else like to share um, something from the meditation? Something that's going on right now. Okay, Arjuna. Hmm. So yeah, when I first closed my eyes, there was first this this whole feeling of warmth. Like my body was, my really body was just warm, just warmness. And after a few seconds, this also disappeared and um. Now yeah, just began falling, like a falling sensation, and this this took a while. Some some thoughts passed, and then then fear arose. So it was 
So that's, I know I'm falling, falling, then there's some fear and then I get a bit attached to the fear and I want to look at it. And then I, I get caught up in it and it just also causes some body sensations and thoughts. And then there's something like a little game going on with fear until I like realize this and take a step back again and. What uh, do you think the fear is about? I, I feel it's about this, that there's, that it could be too quiet, that there could be nothing or something. <laughs> <laughs> so this always, this, uh, this yeah, takes me out of it. And then there's always a little game of my mind that plays with this, with itself when this fear arises. Like it tries to analyze the fear and it, and it, yeah. I mean, it sounds as if the fear can be <clears throat> something where you feel afraid, where some substantial change could happen. Yeah. When it gets very, very quiet, this is not maybe your normal um, situation. And so uh, comparing your normal situation with this sudden deep emptiness or quietness uh, brings up some kind of fear in the mind, it seems. Yeah. So you can investigate that fear because in some ways it's a bit natural because, of course, if we fall deeply into this emptiness or this uh, silence or quietness, then something profound can happen. And there, there can be a fear of that happening. And so, um, you know, if you think of a cliff and you're, I don't know, a hundred meters away from the cliff, you don't even think about the cliff. You're just happily wandering around, playing on the grass, but as you would come closer to the cliff and then you come maybe two meters away from the cliff, um, you can still be pretty relaxed and um, um, not being concerned and no sign of any fear. But then if you keep moving towards the edge of the cliff and if you look down, you see that it's a long way down and there are rocks down there or crocodiles or something. And then as you get so close to the edge, without doing anything, you find that fear arises. Just this feeling of fear comes. And in that situation, you look down and you see the rocks or the crocodiles and you feel that this fear is perfectly reasonable. It's a natural fear. So mm -hmm. we can be afraid of our own emptiness our own quietness uh, we can be afraid of our own moment of realization and um, it's just a matter again as i was just talking to brett to see that you have to be identifying to some extent with something personal uh, you're not in non-duality you're actually in some kind of duality you create that fear and it's it becomes very subtle maybe and maybe you're somebody who doesn't experience that so much. I don't know. If I look at you now, you've got very dark eyes, very clear, dark eyes. So actually, right now, you look very good. You don't look like the person who just got fear. Yet, kind of this in the third part, when you said to, to fall deeper, then it it didn't feel like I felt I, I, like this falling sensation went away, but the fear also kind of was gone then, and it was just a very like it felt like a trace of the fear was left in my solar plexus then, like just very warm in my solar plexus, and then there was just yeah, it was quiet, but some judgment arose about that that it. That, that there should be more, I don't know, more, well, more expectations maybe, of this of this quietitude. <laughs> maybe you don't need to do that bit, you know, that last bit that you've done to yourself, maybe you didn't really need to do that. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you for sharing. 
Perhaps somebody I don't know so well. Mitis raising a hand. Who? Mitis. Micah. Ah, Mitis. Okay. Yes, I haven't met you before. You, the way you've got the light on your no. face, you look rather remarkable. No, es, es, el primer, es mi primer día. Es mi primer día. Yeah, this is my first day. Yes. Y no, no tenía el enlace, por eso he llegado un poco, un poco tarde. And I didn't have the link, so I arrived a little bit late. Sí. Oh, it's okay. And you're it's from okay. Spain? Are you from Spain? Sí, Eres de España. Uh, sí, I am near, uh, cerca de donde, de Denia. Yo... I live near Denia. Oh, you live near, have you been to our house? Has estado en nuestra casa, en Denia. No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. So we have a very nice house on the edge of Denia in a place called La Rotas. Do you know La Rotas? Tenemos la casa en Las Rotas, muy cerca en el borde de Denia. ¿Conoces Las Rotas? Es al lado de Denia. No, no, yo vivo en el interior, en Alicante, pero, pero hacia el interior, en Novelda. So I live in Novelda. This is near Alicante, but it's, um, yeah, like deep Alicante. Sí. Okay, good. Well, perhaps we'll meet you sometime. I don't, I don't know if you've got some advertising, but we're actually coming down to uh, Spain in two weeks time and we're offering a i'll be offering a public meeting on the friday and then we're offering a weekend with lots of activities including a concert and meditation and if, then on the on monday for the whole week we're offering a program to go deeper into investigating inside ourselves is this something that could be interesting for you So, Maite, eh, no, sé, no sabemos si lo sabes, pero eh, en nuestra casa en, en Denia estamos organizando una actividad dentro de dos semanas. Esta actividad eh, eh, con, incluye un fin de semana de, de inauguración gratis en, en Denia, seguido de una semana de transformación. Y aquí pues, vas a tener la oportunidad de ir mucho más a fondo, mucho más profundo en tu evaluación personal. ¿Es que has recibido esta información o estarías considerando te gustaría participar? Eh, no, hoy es un poco, eh, no conocía a John, he comprado sus libros y es curiosidad. Quiero ver, a ver, eh, quiero escucharle, quiero, yo estudio también no dualidad y, y bueno, no, no sabía, no conocía, solo tenía la newsletter, estaba en la newsletter de, de John y he recibido la información y, y me inscribí a hoy. Pero, pero para ver es nuevo para mí. No lo he escuchado ni, ni, ni nada. <laughs> so, Maite didn't know about you. Um, she got the newsletter and she got interested. So, she's curious and she has read um, some of your books. And she also she's very interested in non-duality. And today right. she's here because she wants to know more. So it's, it's, right. she's curious. Okay. Is she interested in our visit? We're coming soon to Spain. She can come and meet me if she likes. Puedes venir a Maite, puedes venir a nuestra casa en Denia y conocer a John uh, David en persona si te gustaría. Eh, muchas gracias. Sí, lo tendré en cuenta. Muchas gracias. So she, she will think about it. She thank you very much, and, and she will keep it in mind. Okay, on the 22nd, on Friday, the 22nd of November, I'll be giving a public meeting at 8 o'clock in our house in La Rotas. En, en nuestra casa en Las Rotas, el viernes 22 de noviembre, a las 8 de la noche, habrá una... Un una eh, conferencia eh, gratuita eh, y donde estará hablando a todas las personas que vengan esa noche. Sí, esperaré eh, inform otra información porque precisamente ese fin de semana no puedo. Ese fin de semana no puedo, pero estaré pendiente de las newsletters y de la información que, me, que, que recibo. So she, uh, she may not be here uh, that weekend, but she's uh, following on the newsletters. 
Okay, and uh, Kyle Ash, who's just translating for you, he'll be translating in that week in Spain. Sí, yo estoy traduciendo ahora para ti, pero también estaré traduciendo esa semana en España, Daniel. Muchas gracias. Do you have your own non-duality teacher? Are you working with somebody? I, I read uh, books, Ramana books. He leído libros de Ramana, de Nisargadatta, eh, Adia Santi, eh, Rupert Espira. Eh, I, estoy descubriendo, estoy descubriendo la, eh, la no dualidad. So she's, uh, she has read many books, including some from uh, Ramana Maharshi, but she's discovering and she's getting to know about non-duality. Uh, well, reading books is perhaps a good beginning, but uh, it doesn't, doesn't really help you very much after a while. You need to actually practice something. Leer libros es un buen inicio, eh, pero a, a, en algún momento ya no te benefician tanto porque es, es posible que necesites empezar a practicar en la vida real. Mm -hmm. Anyway, in, in this meditation we've just done, did you experience something? En esta meditación que acabamos de hacer hoy en la noche, pudi pudiste experimentar algo. Es que eh, no me mandaron el enlace y no cuando entré ya estaba terminada. No la he escuchado la meditación. No so, sé. She, yeah, so she didn't have the right link. So by the time she joined the meeting, the meditation was over. Ah, oh, okay, okay, good. Okay, are you are you meditating regularly? Do you have meditation practice? Yes. yes. Hmm. Okay. Sí. Good. Okay, so welcome, and uh, as I say, I'll be in Spain for 10 days in uh, two weeks' time. You're welcome to come and meet me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Estaremos en España 10 días. Eres bienvenida y puedes venir a casa para conocer a John David. Muchas gracias. Okay. Somebody else like to share about the meditation or whatever? Okay, Ananda. Ananda va a compartir su experiencia. You say something, Ananda, you'll appear. Hello. So, yeah, for me it was, I don't know, I cried a lot. There was, the first time I closed my eyes, there was so much energy. And my heart is still beating a lot. And I just cried out of, I don't know. There was such a big response from, from the inside. So, yeah. Okay, but you don't know what caused the tears. Are they tears of joy or tears of sadness? No, it's not sadness. It's just this energy. Right. right. So beautiful. and. It's so strong through the in through the internet too and uh, yeah. All right, all right. Good. Well that sounds sounds perfect, yeah. Are you feeling good these days? Yeah, I mean I cried also a lot. I I looked at Ramana's picture and I just I just cried so much. And then I heard Papaji in the car driving on the honey tour. I cried so much. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Lakshmi, you still got something to share? Oh. Yeah, um, at first um, uh, there were some body sensations uh, because of aching fingers and so on. <clears throat> and then I fell very deep, but uh, I can't really dif 
differentiate between have I been only very tired because my body is very weak in the last days or did I f fall really so deep because the, uh, at the last uh, part of the meditation I was very very um, silent and um, calm I can't really yeah. differentiate you know right but maybe you don't need to either I mean, it sounds as if the direction of your meditation was to become very deep and quiet. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Okay. And uh, during the, the every day, you know, of the week, are you able to spend part of every day now in a lot of silence? Mm -hmm. I try to do my work, meditate, meditate, um, um, meditate, meditate, you know? yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, my old pattern to to work and work and work, it's um, always um, going on, and I, but I keep. Uh, going on to to uh, take my time out, some time out, an, an hour, and uh, on my bed or so, something, an hour in the garden or something. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. But you don't necessarily need a time out. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can be simply present in whatever tasks you're doing. For example, if you're yeah. going to wash the dishes, you can be washing the dishes and standing at the, the sink and be present. Mm. So in that situation, there's no need to go and lie on your bed. Mm. I mean, lying on your bed in the daytime would be a bit of a drastic um, response if something like Brett is experiencing maybe something very strong like that, if something like that would be happening then there might be a reason to lie on the bed. But, I mean, you know, being meditative doesn't mean doing nothing. You can be meditative yeah. and wash the dishes, you know, mm -hmm. actually. Because mm -hmm. what's more important than being what you're calling meditative is to be simply present. Yeah. And being mm -hmm. present, I mean, one would hope that you go through each day doing your tasks, and at the same time being present. You're present in the garden while you're digging something. You're present in the house when you're putting some flowers into a flower pot mm. or whatever you're doing, I don't yeah. know. But, mm. but there's no reason why you can't simply be present in all those things mm. if you can remember yourself. So you have to remember yourself to be there. Yeah? And unfortunately, mm. very often we're washing the dishes but we're thinking about i don't know, mm. you know last week's party or something you know we're we're mm. we're not really present or we may be remembering things that happened many many years ago and these things don't bring us peace and they don't don't bring us what i'm sure you would like to have mm. but i'm not sure if in the middle of washing the dishes, you, you need to stop, turn off the taps and say, okay, I need to go now and lie on my bed for an hour because I'm not feeling very present. Yes. Uh, yes, but my body is really very weak in the last time. Okay, I well, that's, to, a to have a well rest. that's a different... But that's a different question. If you need more rest, then, uh, yeah. of course, you can do a bit less of, of the tasks and spend more time lying on your bed, you know, if that's mm. what's needed for your body. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Very yeah, good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else like to share? Who have we got? What about Saraswati? You haven't shared for a while. Now that you're relaxed after your exams, are you relaxed after your exams? 
Um, well, it's completely different um, to be here and not have to study. So I experience um, things way more deeper. And I'm at the moment learning much about non-attachment. Right. And um, yeah, for the first time in a way, reading or um, listening to spiritual um, teachers. Um, right. Due to the translation week, uh, trans work we do to um, edit the new videos with subtitles oh, and nice. therefore there's also some input about spirituality and yeah I really feel that I um, now can can see more um, about some structures and that I attach to some things and in right. a way I can right. also see that there's that that's not the reality Right. That I that I'm getting getting in some silence or like it feels like turning around, but mm -hmm. then again there come some attachments. Right. But I and, right. and then I'm back again. Yes, and so it's just like, yeah, it's. In a way, I feel present, but I also see what gets me out of the presence. Right. I think you're coming to Spain soon, aren't you? Yes. So you have a very nice year to, to stay in. And, uh, uh, well, at the moment, it's not a lot of fun because it's raining a lot. But by the time you come next week, the rain should be over and you'll have sun again and blue sky. <laughs> and so in this beautiful garden, you will have a chance to um, investigate and um see what is maybe there inside you you're very young and maybe you haven't practiced looking inside so much mm. so you don't know really what your issues are maybe mm. yeah thank you very much mm. what are you thanking me for <laughs> <laughs> for the opportunity and for the encouragement to come okay, okay. right yeah but you've been to Spain before, I think, yeah? Yes. Right, right. Okay, good. But it's not so nice now with the rain, but uh, it doesn't affect me. I'm working on the book, so, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, maybe one more person. Would you like to share something, Volker? I see you've just arrived on the screen. Do you want to, Shanti? I don't mind yeah. who it is. Speak. Okay. How are you doing now? You're back in Germany. You had to, you had your months of sunshine and blue skies. Did you ever see the blue sky? I, I don't hear you. Do you have a, have you got your sound on? Yes, now I have my sound on. Do you yeah, hear me? Good. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Now we have yeah. here also some nice days. Yeah? Yeah, 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 we have here. Today it was a little bit rainy, but before we had also nice days. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I'm coming back on Friday, so keep keep the blue skies until after Friday. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Okay. I and know. How was the meditation for you? In the beginning, certainly, I saw that I was completely lost in in thoughts, and sometimes I can have that I'm totally lost in thoughts, and then suddenly everything falls away, and then it is silent. Without, right. yeah, I don't know, but I'm, uh, and then it was a while silence. But I must say that I fell asleep in the last part when we went deeper because I'm very tired. But, um, what 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 happened in the last part? Sorry, I in the last what? part I noticed yeah. I fell asleep. Oh, you fell asleep. Okay. I fell asleep. Right. Yeah. Suddenly, then right. I see that my feel that my head is going down. Okay. Yeah. 
But, but it sounds as if if you, you have the capacity now to be present, yeah? Right? Yes, I, 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 it's both. I can be present, but I can also be... Not so present, yeah. Not so present than do, being in my mind. Right, and right. I was, it's also sometimes what is... But I noticed the last time that I can spend more time at the cooking time and try to find new recipes and that is what I like. That okay. there is more time for this and then I must be more present in what I'm doing for the cooking. Not in my okay. old routine. Okay, but well, anyway, you do a great job with the co cooking, I think you know this. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You're coming to India to cook, are you? I suppose so, yes. Okay, we're, we're negotiating at the moment with a very nice Russian lady mm -hmm. who helped us with proofreading the Russian Ahamsparana. And yeah. she may come as a helper and then she will oh, work with you in the good. kitchen. Yeah, oh, nice lady. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I think maybe I go to the um go to tonight's text. So I think I'll start by reading the whole text and then we'll go through um each each different uh, so this is a bit interesting because uh, it's a conversation which involves Major Chadwick. If you look at the top of the paper, it says Chadwick. So he was an English army officer from the First World War, and um, he was living in England. And one day he came across this book about India and uh, in, in Search of Secret India. And in this book, uh, Ramana Mahashi is given a very strong, um, you know, strong, um, I don't know the right word, but anyway. So he, he, he got very touched from reading about Ramana. And apparently he almost immediately arranged to come on a ship to India. And later he shows up in the ashram and he shares a, quite a nice separate cottage, quite a big cottage actually, with Animalai Swami, who was one of the most interesting of the close disciples. He, he in particular was the construction manager or the construction organizer for building the ashram. So he had a very close connection to Ramana and um, he lived for many years in the ashram, building the ashram, until one day he met Ramana in the toilet. And um, he asked Ramana, uh, is the uh, Ananda of a sadhu smoking marijuana, is this Ananda that he gets, is it the same Ananda as he he or we are getting in the ashram and uh, ramana came and grabbed him put his arms around animalai swami and started kind of dancing around the toilet with him and this was very very strong and when he was let go of he realized uh, that he had completely disappeared there was no animalai swami left and he stayed in the toilet for some time. And then he went to his room and packed his few things and then came to meet Ramana and told Ramana, I'm, I'm leaving the ashram. I'm going to live nearby. He didn't ask. He just told that he's going to do that. And uh, maybe some of you who've been to Ramana ashram have been in the corner of the ashram, it's a little bit difficult to find, but in the corner of the ashram, there is what used to be Animalai Swami's ashram. So when he left the ashram, he went to live in a bamboo hut nearby. There was a, near, near, near the ashram, there was a kind of village of bamboo huts in the old days. Because if you lived, if you lived out of the ashram, you didn't have to work. You could come into the ashram 
and you could sit all day with Ramana. But if you lived in the ashram, you were required to spend part of your day doing some task. So anyway, um, when Anamalai Swami left the ashram, he constructed for himself a small room in bricks, and it was in the corner of the ashram, the Ramana ashram. So he developed a very tiny little ashram, and he had he had an assistant and so on, and he lived very quietly there. Uh, in, my, in my first visit to, to Ramana Ashram in 1982, I think it was, or 83, I stayed in the ashram for a month, and then I was able to arrange an afternoon when I could go and visit Anamalai Swami. And when I got there, he was sitting more or less naked on, on his uh, tucket, on his sort of bed, you know, Indian style bed, they call it tucket. And he was sitting there and he had a, a man who could translate into English, who was his kind of assistant. And uh, we had a wonderful afternoon and I spent most of my afternoon admiring the beauty of this old man's body because he was in his late 80s, I think, when I met him. And his body, it looked like his body had been bronzed in the sun and then polished. So all his skin was kind of brown, uh, very polished and very healthy looking. And so I was uh, absorbed into looking at his leg or his arm or something like this. Yeah? Anyway, we had an interesting thing. And then at a certain time, I was told, well, let's, he's going for a walk now. And um, he's going to go up on the mountain for a walk. And so I, I left the room and um, I walked around to watch what happens when he goes for a walk. And um, of course, he looked quite frail sitting by himself on, the, on this bed. But when he came out of the door onto the outside of the ashram, he started walking away up the hill, up Arunachala, uh, with tremendous energy, tremendous sort of feeling of power and uh, uh, capacity, you could say. So I was very touched, actually, because I had figured out he's like an old guy who can just not manage very much. He can manage to sit and talk, really. But actually, it wasn't true. He was tremendously powerful. So, um, yeah. So anyway, uh, Ch Chadwick, Major Chadwick, uh, he shared the room with Animalai Swami, so they became very good friends. So Chadwick was saying unhappily, I've been staying here for months. I see no improvement in me. If anything, my condition seems to be taking a turn for the worse. I'm desperate to realize in this lifetime. Bagwen said, give up the idea that you are striving for realization. And then Chadwick aghast, what? Bagwan would have me abandon the quest? Has he decided I'm unworthy to realize? Did you pay attention to what was said to you? You were not asked to abandon the quest. You were asked to abandon the spurious idea that there is a you which is trying to merge with a super you. So this is uh, actually the fundamental teaching of Ramana Mahashi. And that is that, in his opinion, there is nobody. We're not a somebody, we're a nobody. There is nobody. When we're simply uh, in presence, there is a no, there's nobody. We have a character which has developed over many years of our growing up. And we can switch on and switch off this character. But if we're too identified with this character, we won't be living in presence. Because, of course, this character has a history, has a past. 
and we very often get caught up in the um, in the in the workings of of the past, and then we get affected emotionally by the past, and then we get caught up. And if Brett doesn't mind me saying so, he he is exhibiting this tonight, and he very honestly shared that. So that was uh, very good. So he's he's making the point to to uh, Chadwick that he needs to look at his investment in wanting to become real life. And then Chadwick said, I understand nothing. And then Bagman says, throw away the belief in the existence of the personal self. It is only on that erroneous basis that you are now asking questions. And then Chadwick, but I must remain to perform spiritual practice. What is the object of your spiritual practice? Destruction of the ego. No. Transcendence of the idea of its existence. So this is, this is very fundamental to Ramana's teachings. And it's, in a way, very con, con what's the word, very... Um, Oh, lost the word, confronting. It's very confronting because we've been living our life very much identified to a character called me, right? Or I, I or me. And so um, Chadwick is, has not yet come to really living in presence. He's been maybe six months in the ashram at that time maybe nine months, and it ends up that he has had never the intention to go back to England. So when he got on the ship to come to India, he had a deep sense that Ramana was going to be his master, and he never left the ashram, and he died, I think, in 1962 in the ashram. So he's one of the very well-known Western disciples, actually. That anyway, Chadwick goes on. So if I just free myself from the idea that I exist as an individual person, the who am I method is not needed. And then Bagman says, first, dis discard that wrong idea. In having discussed, discarded that idea, do not bring in any other idea in its place such as aham brahmasi, I am a Brahmin, I am, I am being consciousness, etc. Remain free from all ideas. It, it, that is from all mental identifications. Let the mind remain in the state of pure subjective consciousness, free from all objectification or identification. Then, as and when thoughts arise, tackle them with the counter thought, to whom as has this thought arisen? This arrests the further development of the thought. Then return the mind to its native state of pure subjective consciousness. This is the way. So this is Ramana describing self-inquiry a little bit differently and other places, but essentially in all his teachings, and I'm at the moment working on, on a new book with about 250 pages of this kind of dialogue. I mean, this is one, one part of a text or one part of a chapter in the book, which I've selected for tonight. And um, he's making his fundamental teaching or fundamental point very, very clear. He's saying that you have to get rid of the personal self. So this, this spiritual practice of asking yourself, who am I? This is not an intellectual inquiry. It, it's not necessarily helping to ask yourself, who am I? And then have an answer to who am I? Um, the whole idea of doing this inquiry is that it reduces your mind 
to silence or to non-existence. That is the problem. The problem is we're identified with all kinds of things, as you experienced particularly with Brett earlier, but um, we all know this. We, we're all trying to be present. We're all trying to be quiet. We're all trying to be peaceful. But unfortunately, due to the way we are conditioned with all kinds of things, it's not so easy to do that. So is somebody, would somebody like to um, dialogue with me about this text? So we have a new volunteer in the house at the moment. Would you like to share something, Siddha? Hello. I, I don't know you, so it's a uh, oh, sorry, I've just got to get the text up. Okay. okay. So, how are you doing in the house? You've been in the house uh, a week now, I guess. I think two weeks already passed. Two weeks already. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And how yeah. has that been, been for you? It's going great. Um, I'm <clears throat> Noticing a lot of anger is rising up. <laughs> a lot of anger? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of anger. Okay. Uh, so the uh, the uh, the punching bag comes very handy. Okay. So I've been using that punching bag a lot. Uh, <laughs> okay. Getting some anger out. And yeah, it's just increasing somehow. <laughs> the anger right and right. yeah it's and something... are you angry about something in particular no i'm just uh pissed off at everything at the same time <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah okay so you're not you're not being particularly pissed off with somebody it's more like the whole world doesn't work for you anymore <laughs> I, I I wouldn't say it like that, but uh, it's just I don't know. It's a it's a new feeling being here. It's uh, I guess somewhat a lot of change that ha that is happening as well. So uh, maybe I'm dealing it with anger. I don't know exactly. Right. But when you say anger, do you mean a kind of frustration? Or you just feel kind of challenged by um, the daily life in the community? I mean, I'm physically a little bit challenged, yes, but uh, I don't think I'm challenged in that way, no. No, no. So the, the anger is coming out of some thinking about your life? Maybe that you don't find your life uh, your, before you come to the community. You've obviously got a life. I don't know much about your mm. life. Are you a student or? No, I've been traveling a lot. And um, past couple of months, the eight, nine months, I've been here in Germany. Okay. I came back from India. And I've been just not doing much to be honest and um and when yeah. you went to in did you go to an ashram in india oh uh, you you're the one who was in Satguru's ashram i think mm -hmm. but that was two years ago so last year i went just traveling across india okay so i've been to some ashrams as well in in that time like i've visited like a couple of ashrams you've been to rishikesh probably have you did you go to yeah. rishikesh I I've, I've yeah. stayed there like for two months I think one or two months, All right, All right. Yeah. That that also helped me. Yeah. So ca coming back from India and then coming back to Germany that also made me very angry because I was feeling like why can I stay more in India? All right. I I don't like Germany at all, 
<laughs> no, I'm here. Right. Well, you know, I I was coming and going to India for about. Well, I'm still going there every year. So I mean, if I consider the fact that the la last twenty one years I've offered a retreat in India in January, plus. Um, I was many years coming and going to Osho, and then I spent five years with Papaji. You added up all my time. I guess I've lived in India for, uh, I don't know, 12 years or something. Yeah. So, I mean, it is possible to stay longer in India. I mean, I never really had any money when I was staying in India. I had to create some means, you know, when I was there. Uh, when, when I wanted to stay in Osho's ashram for some longer time, I developed um, a business cutting up all my paintings. I used to do quite big paintings, and then I cut them up into small pieces and stick them on a card and sell them with an envelope as a greeting card. That was one way I made money. And in a similar way, I made candles. So... I had different ideas like putting the wax in glasses or clay pots, different ways to present the, you know, the candles. And by a stroke of luck, my girlfriend was running the boutique in the ashram. And so she was very happy to sell my cards and my candles. So I had a little business running on the side of my meditation. And that gave me the, the means to stay for quite a few years, actually. And somehow I always managed to get somehow the knack somehow of finding a way later on when I was with my teacher, Papaji, um, he gave me the idea that I should open a guest house for the, his, he said, for my people, for the people coming to visit him. So for about four years, I ran a rather big guest house involved uh, having somebody for cooking, cleaning, gardening. Uh, so I had two or three Indian guys who would, uh, would help me with running the house. And we constantly had guests arriving, guests leaving. And, and the income from that gave me enough money to stay in India. So if you really want to stay in India, I think you can do it. I, I I don't think money is really the issue. I I guess it's more like the visa issue. It's not as easy as it used to be. It's like ah right right like you can't stay there, otherwise you'll be jailed or something. Like that. Right, it's changed a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can only stay six months uh, at a time, and then you have. Uh, Uh, no, three months at a time, but totally right. six months in a year. So you have to right. get out every three months from the country and then come back inside. So it's a lot of hassle and right. really right. getting anywhere. Right. But again, there, there are ways around that. For example, if, if you make a connection with an ashram, then the, um, the teacher of the ashram can write you a special letter to the immigration people and get you, you know, a long, much longer stay. So, for example, mm -hmm. I go in now every year in the south of India to a mountain called Arunachala, where Ramana Maharshi had his ashram. And I know quite a few Western people living there who get supported by the ashram. So the ashram can write and say, This person is a serious meditator, and we'd like to ask you to give him a, you know, five-year visa or something like that. You know, so it is possible to find a way to get a, a longer visa, but it's certainly not as easy as it was years ago. I mean, I was coming to India 50 years ago, and then it was not so easy. It was very easy, rather. You could just go and give a little bit of money under the table, and the guy would give you a stamp for a couple of years. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I wish okay. it was that easy now. So now uh, you, you're back in Germany and you, you don't find it uh, as, as good as you had a time in India. It doesn't work so well here in Germany. 
Well, the community is the second best thing to India, so <laughs> yeah, I guess that's there. All right, All right, okay, yeah, good. Okay, so is there something you'd like to say about this text that I wrote? You understand this point, you that he's saying throw away the belief in the existence of the personal self. Uh, I guess whatever I think of myself, whatever it is that is believing I am, I, it is not real. It's just an illusion. So I right. guess the moment I go into silence, it's where I meet my true self. So it's, right. it's also a choice, I guess, to, to fool around a little more with the character I built yeah. to go in deeper into it. And it's just a choice, really. Well, it's only a choice if you if you become aware enough about how it works, you know, because unfortunately we, we grow up um, in a situation where we're, we're created this character. I mean, our parents give us a name, uh, our friends give us uh, support for this name, and there are certain behaviors we learn in the school and with our parents. And so this character gets built up, yeah, and we get very identified with this character. So what Ramana is saying is not to be identified with the character, and he offers this um, spiritual practice of who am I? Yeah. But when when thoughts arise, you ask yourself, to whom do these thoughts arise? And the answer is me or I. And then you ask, who is this me or who is this I? Yeah. And, and the second question is not having really an answer. There is no answer because we know we're the self, but you can't say I'm the self because it's just a, just just a word. You know? So mm -hmm. when we when we don't have any answer to the second question, there's a possibility we can fall deep enough inside that we come to the self. And as soon as you come to the self, you can feel that it's like a very particular um, situation. Maybe maybe you could share. I expect in being in India for so long. You've had moments maybe happening to you where something happened and you, in a way, disappeared. Any identification disappeared. Have you had that experience? I definitely had some, some of these experiences, but I couldn't point a finger which identification went away at that time. So right, just happened and I forgot already. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Well, now you, it, maybe you're getting deeper in spiritual work. You can watch what happens. But basically, whatever happens to bring you to the self, it's uh, the screen of being a somebody, you know, some belief you have, some philosophy you have, uh, some, some kind of uh, judgments you have. Um, these are all getting attached to this illusionary me. You know, I I think this. I'm um, you know, yeah. I know that. I don't know this. Is whatever it is. So so, I mean, in our community, living in the community, I think you will see that it 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 has a kind of um, subtle um, support for this process because when you sit to eat, uh, for example, lunch or breakfast. Uh, dinner we do anyway in silence, but the other meals you can sit down and then somebody starts talking. And, and, and in these moments, we don't necessarily need to get very caught up. So it, in that way, our ashram is not similar to the daily society life, I would say. Because we're all very aware that we don't want to get caught up in, in this whole story of me. Mm -hmm. I can feel that I'm uh, since I've been here I'm 
being more conscious of how I eat and how present I am while I'm eating. So there are moments where I'm just with the food. But of course, some thoughts also arise at some point. But uh, I'm getting more aware about it day after day. And did you, in your travels in India, did you come across an interesting ashram? You you thought Satguru's place was the best that you came to? In terms of energy, of course, definitely. Satguru's ashram is like a powerhouse of energy. It's like right. so right. much. Yeah, I've been there maybe three or four times take, taking my students to visit that place. But we yeah, used to cool. we used to stay in another ashram about an hour's bus ride from his ashram in Compature nearby, mm. and this was the ashram of a man called um, oh, what was it called? Dayananda Swami Dayananda. And if you're interested, you you can see in the bookshop you can uh, read this book, uh, Indian Masters. Have you seen this book? I did a book where I interviewed Indian masters. Seven seven masters, I think, was that? No, f- 15 masters or 16 15. masters, I think. And one of them was this Dayananda. And so we used to go and stay in his ashram. He was one of the most famous, uh, uh, I think, famous masters in India for many years. He was a bit like the Pope of India, and he would get to go to you know, international meetings of spiritual people and so on. Very nice guy, actually, and a very wise man. And from there, we used to drive to Satguru's ashram um, because he he would he wouldn't make himself available. A couple of times I asked him if he'd like to be interviewed, and he didn't want to respond, so he wasn't in the book. Uh, but in his ashram, there were all kind of... Uh, toys yeah, you can play with so i remember that the, there's this he dug a he's dug a, a pit into the ground and divided it into men and women you go down these very steep steps into the earth and at the bottom there's a big pond and there's a waterfall i guess you've been to that place have you yeah it's the surya kund it's very, yeah. very beautiful with the yeah. nagat shrine yeah so he Sankur is very clever with those kind of things, in my opinion. So when I took students there, they all had a, a good two or three hours playing in those places. I mean, the 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 main the main um, uh, I don't know what he would call it, but the main place for meditation, also a very powerful place. Yeah, the Diana Linga, I think. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's very yeah. powerful. Yeah. 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 But I must admit I have a, I have some questions about Satguru actually. But anyway, he's a very successful character. Mm. Mm. Has he been very sick recently? Did I understand that there was yeah. there was a question whether he would be able to survive or not? He had mm. some serious health problem. Yeah, he had some brain swelling. Like he wasn't attending very much. Well, like he's traveling a lot. Like um, he's also sleeping very less, like four or five hours, and just traveling constantly. So right. he had a brain swelling at some point, and at first he didn't think much of it. So he just left it, and after that it became more serious, and he had to be operated and. I guess by some miracle it healed again and it was all right. Oh. Now he's perfect in good health. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. So they had to release the pressure in his uh, his brain had, had swollen against the skull and so they had to release the sort of pressure in his brain, I guess, did they? I, I guess, yeah. I'm not sure, but oh. uh, I guess that's right. right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. And he didn't like you uh, being involved with some uh, relationship. Is that what I heard about you? <laughs> um, I don't think he particularly 
didn't like it, but I guess the teachers who were teaching us didn't like that much because it's very much against the rules. Which um, I kind of find ironic because the, the the head of the teacher training program, the director of the, the program, he also had some something familiar happening like that and he had to marry that girl or uh, get out of the ashram. So he had the choice to stay there and and he of course got married <laughs> and stayed oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh right. Right. Did they they didn't offer that to you? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so so in our in our ashram we don't offer that choice. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Actually, I don't want to get married. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So, uh, okay, we we a bit of got off the point, maybe. Anyway, so do you have any particular comment on this text? Um, I feel like the "Who am I?" is more um. Um, how do I say intellectual All right. for me than it is um, making me present so right now I'm not really um, trying to do the who am I whenever I can I'm just seeing All if right. it arises spontaneously and, and then I'll just do it but otherwise I'm not really really interested also in doing it yet I, I don't have the urge to do it so i'm not sure i was i was told that you don't sleep very much and you have your own practices in the night time is that right yeah i'm doing some kriyas that i've learned from the ashram so i'm doing those okay in the morning and i've been keeping that up since i think three four years right uh, so that also and what benefits me. what benefit do you get from that mm, so one of those practices is called um, shakti chalana kriya which um, i think was translating to mastery of the five elements or something like that i'm not sure again mastery of the elements something like that Mm -hmm. and if you really get into it and practice it sincerely which I don't think I am at this point mm -hmm. but if you do it uh, sincerely then I don't know it's like a mastery of uh, energy and elements I don't know exactly but yeah right right, right. okay nice to talk to you first time we've had a bit of a chat mm -hmm. Okay, so um, would somebody else like to dialogue about this text? I better have my chat with Madhu, I think, make sure she's okay. I have no. to look after you more. I have to look after you more now because you don't live in the community. I know. If, I, if you lived in the community, I can have somebody else look after you a bit. Who would that be? Well, who, who would you like? Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I'd get Naomi to look after you. Maybe. Have you got much contact with Naomi and Amelia? Um, at the beginning, not really. Because right. I like when I came first, I was really intimidated by them. Um, how how did they intimidate you? Um, you made some judgment about them, did you? About their kind of uh, open energy, and you decided they're much more open than you. Is that what you? That what happened? Probably. Honestly, my mind is blank right now, so um, 
Yeah, because they are really honest and they notice everything and they just say if they like you or not or something like that. <laughs> and I was intimidated for sure. All right, all right. Apparently, uh, you know, they, they were here down in Spain with me for a week. And I'm staying another week to work on the book. So um, apparently when they came back on Sunday evening, when they were coming back from the airport, I was told that Amelia wanted to go and meet everybody and say hello. You know? But of course, uh, they got back after 11. It was too late to go and meet everybody because most of the people were already in, in bed. And then the next day she went to to school. Yesterday she was in school. And then coming coming home from school again, she was saying, ah, oh, maybe now I can go and say hello to everybody. So I found this very, very sweet that they identify very much to be part of this kind of family of people who live together. And what what's quite brilliant for me is that they, over the years, they choose the people, you know? They give everybody a chance. You know, they go to everybody, including people who've just come for a few hours. They go and check them out. They try to play with them, whoever it is. And then they see what kind of response they get. And if the person shows some kind of willingness to engage, you know, some willingness to play and have fun, they're very, very, um, very open to accept that. Yeah. So um, I found it very sweet that Amelia couldn't wait to go and greet everybody, even though she was coming back after her bedtime on on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I haven't interacted so much with them yet, but um, I will try. <laughs> yeah. But are but they I mean, the, hmm? the thing that's beautiful with them, you see, is you just have to be yourself. You don't have to, they don't want any show or act or anything. You just be yourself, you see. Mm -hmm. And if you just go to them being Madhu, they will be very happy to meet you, I'm sure. Hmm. If they really like you, you get a nickname. So, so Arjuna, I was talking to Arjuna earlier, he's called Spider-Man. So he's very popular with the girls, and they call him Spider Man, or anyway, media calls him Spider Man. So wow, I'm not quite sure the reason for that, but yeah, hmm. yeah, they're pretty tough kids, you know, and uh, it's just as likely that a media will say to me, "Go away, Papa," as she will say, "Come here, Papa," you know, she's. It can be at any moment, you know, that you never know what you what she's going to give you. Yeah. Very spontaneous girl. Like you, maybe. You're maybe a quieter version of, of a spontaneous girl. Yeah. I'm like, I feel very quiet the last days and all the time. So what to do? <laughs> Oh, it's very nice, yeah. You like being quiet, don't you? You just, I mean, the, the, the price you pay for being quiet is you don't have so many friends. Yeah, or um, I feel, I mean, I can hang out with them, but I feel very disconnected. So I talk, like, on on some level, like, I talk with them and can have fun, but... Um, it's all so far away from me. Like it's just blah, blah blah on the surface level, and then there's just this like very like deep feeling somewhere else. So right. something like that. Right. right. Anyway, I think you seem to me to be a person who can handle being alone and being quiet. That's in a way a bit your destiny, I think. Yeah. Even your your cho choosing sports. I mean, when you're running around the track, you're not talking. I guess you're not meeting anybody. You're trying to go faster than them. Yeah. Yeah. Impossible <laughs> to talk. Right. 
Okay, so I'm going to, do you have anything else that you would like to talk about? Um, not right now, maybe next time we will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. You're not planning to come to India with us? Um, I am, like, I would like to, but as you know, like, my, um, exam is on the 4th of February, so I will have uh, to see how that works out. Ah, uh, right, right, that's a bit difficult, yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends what kind of exam you've got, but, uh, I think we start on the 20th, so we actually won't, won't, they won't be back until the middle of February, so. You can send the, your exam from India, but uh, that's probably not how they test you. No, I wish. Right. No. right. Okay. Well, another another time maybe. Good. Okay. Actually, I think we're going to finish, and I just suddenly noticed I'm a bit tired. But we'll do one more talk. Who, who would like to uh, have a dialogue now? Maybe Nataraj? Will it be a good moment for you, Nataraj? Um, yeah, it's always a good moment. I mean, I'm noticing that I also get a bit tired now, but yeah but you had you had a, a strong day yesterday i think yeah um yes yes i was at a funeral for my mother it was very energetic right yeah did it disturb you or could you accept it as it was um I mean, I think it's both. Um, I mean, I, I can accept it. And mm -hmm. sometimes, I mean, ideas come up or thoughts come up of of like uh, the future, what could happen with my mother when she would be alive or what we would do together. Or sometimes it's also a thought of some other, I don't know, for example, her man or my brothers or friends how they feel right now when i actually tap into this then i don't know then it just uh, yeah a huge huge sadness comes over me and yeah when I, I i feel like when i don't go into this then i can accept it and this changes yeah but right now i i mean <laughs> I, I feel rather good yeah you feel feel good right now. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, ten seconds ago it changed a bit, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, uh, 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 earlier in the meeting, in fact, in the beginning of the meeting, I had this talk with Brett. Yeah, and did yeah. that touch something in you? Um, I mean. It was interesting to watch, but it didn't touch me so much emotionally. Uh-huh. Okay. Because you, you can also use the fact that your mother's past, you can also use this situation to, if you like, test your own state of presence, yeah? Because as Brett exhibited, he's got a strong situation with three people that obviously were important in his life. And um, he can easily dwell in some things with those three people. But this immediately puts him very much in the personal, yeah? And in a probably in a personal which he believes is true, yeah? It, it takes quite a lot of spiritual work to come to the realization that there is nothing, you know, there is nothing. I mean, in my own case, I spent my whole life basically to gradually discover that there is nothing. There's just right now, this moment now. 
Yeah, this helps me a lot. I mean, this this process helps me a lot to see this because it's actually how I deal with it. It's just to go in the present whenever a thought comes of some idea, some some thought that creates sadness, then I just go into the present, into what's what's now there, and then it, it disappears and yeah, it becomes more clear. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, your eyes also show that you're very uh, quiet and and sense, uh, centered at the moment. Right? Can you feel that? Your eyes yes, are, yes, are, are very cool. quiet, I think. I mean, I feel quiet in the mind, and my my body does energy moving. Yeah, right. right. Okay. Okay. And th this text from Ramana, you 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 see something from this text. I mean, for me, it's 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 interesting that this would would have been in nineteen thirty five. Uh, sorry, 36. So he'd been in the ashram maybe six months, and he's complaining, you know, that he doesn't make any progress. But of course, that's not really true. And his his way it was clearly that he completely was in love with Ramana. I mean, the fact that he arrived with the intention of staying and not leaving, and then he stayed until he became an old man and then died in the ashram. Um, it shows that he is a very unusual guy, I, I would say. Yeah. And uh, in the beginning, Ramana used to go and visit him in his room. Maybe after lunch, he, Ramana would go and visit his room, maybe sit on the, on the bed and have, they would talk together. Ramana would answer his questions. He had a notebook and he'd write down the answers in a notebook. And he would ask uh, Major Chadwick to explain about his radio or some other tech stuff he had. Maybe he had an electric toothbrush or I don't know what, what he would have had in 1935, but um, not so much, of course. But anyway, uh, they had a very easy relationship. And then one day, Apparently, the story was that, that Major Chadwick put a chair in the room. His idea was that when Ramana visits him, it would be nice that he can sit in a chair. So he put a chair, especially for Ramana. And after that, Ramana ne never came again, never <laughs> visited him again. No. Okay, okay, thank you. So I think we're going to finish now, unless anybody particularly wants to. So you know now, uh, today is Tuesday, so the next Zoom meeting will be next Tuesday. But on Friday of this week, there will be a, a public meeting in the house. If you want, you can come a bit earlier and share dinner with the community. Otherwise, the meeting is at eight o'clock. Um, and you're all, of course, welcome to come. And so I'm I'm so much enjoying the last public meeting we had, a live meeting, that I'm now rearranging my schedule. So every Friday, almost every Friday, not quite every Friday, but almost every Friday, I'll be giving a public meeting. And I, I feel this works very well with the Zoom meeting. I like, I like both of them. Um, so if, if you're not living near our house, so you can't easily come on Friday, you can also come into the meeting on Friday. If you talk to Ohm, he can explain how you can come anyway into the meeting from wherever you are. So it, it can act, you can either watch it through YouTube or you can watch it through Zoom. And if you would like to do that, uh, I'm sure Ohm has posted somewhere how to do it. And if, if he hasn't, you can write and ask him, he'll call you and, and he'll tell you how you can connect on Friday.
but of course it's very nice if you can if you're not living too far away it's it's also very nice if you can come and uh, be in the meeting the special special get together okay good and don't ah don't forget don't forget the last thing is on friday is the 1st of november so that is the last day for getting the special price for india so if you're interested to come to india before friday you must at least tell indira that you're very interested in that um, and then you know if we if you tell us before friday then you can still get this uh, special discount okay so see you all soon